All right, welcome Anton to the 737 800 flight deck. We're sitting here at uh, Melbourne International Airport. We're sitting at the the holding point of runway 27. You can see the sign runway 27 out here. Uh, so the, ta the sorry, the, the runway is just out in front of us, and sort of goes off at a 45 degree angle almost. Um, before I talk about the flight, I'm just going to very quickly walk you through the instrumentation here. I know you've got a, a bit of flight sim experience and you watched the video at the front, so it's probably all a bit, uh, looks a bit familiar as far as uh, the instrumentation goes. But I'll just walk you through it, like I said. If you have any questions, yep, feel free to you. stop me and, inter uh, and interrupt me and, and ask me. Now, the first two screens there are duplicated on my side as well, and the main screen that we watch is the primary flight display. has all the important information for our flight. Probably the most important being the artificial horizon, which is the square in the middle. Airspeed and altitude. Airspeed indicator, altimeter. Yeah. That's it, nice and easy. And bearing. That's it. D on the right, on the next screen here is a, a navigation display. Might have the GPS you have in your cars nowadays. The triangle in the center there is the actual aircraft that we're sitting in. The two parallel lines there, that's actually the one we're going to take off from and land on today. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then there's this white dotted line. That white dotted line is simply the runway center line. Just extend it out so we can line up on a bit better as we're coming into land. So, what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll, we'll you can use that as a bit of a, a guide to get us back down to our runway. Yep. The pink line there is a rough, uh, a rough track out to uh, Avalon. Yes. The the solid pink line. We're not going to follow it exactly. Yep. Um, so but uh, got that in yeah, I'll uh, plug that into the FM, flight. at the flight management computer, the FMC. But uh, we're, we're like I said, we're not going to follow that completely because it hasn't got a proper uh, approach in there yet. Yes. So that's fine. Now the next two screens here have all our engine instruments. So we have two engines on board: the left engine and your right engine. The main thing that we watch today, the N1s, they're the big fans on the front of the engine that I see spinning around. Yep. Otherwise, there's an EGT or exhaust gas temperature that tells how hot the engines are. Fuel flow. FFs, fuel flow, yep. oil pressure and temperatures down the bottom there, nice and easy. Down the bottom here is our fuel quantities. We've got three tanks on board the aircraft, a center tank, then two wing tanks. Plenty of fuel for today's flight, but we'll just keep an eye on it as we're flying along. Moving on from that, we've got a landing gear lever here. I'm not sure if the, the Seneca you fly would, would have yeah. aren't retractable, so yes. it's pretty straightforward. Out, all the way to the top goes back in again. Coming back into land, it comes out, all the way to the bottom goes back in again. Nice and easy. Three green lights there yeah. I indicate the landing gear down and up. Green lights are great to land, essentially, down and locked. Red lights are in transit, no lights are up and stowed. The flap control lever here. Yeah. To operate that, it's simply just a matter of lifting it up and bringing it back and dropping whatever setting you want, or up, forward, whatever setting you want. Nice and easy. There is a little safety gate here at 1 and a safety gate at 15 that stops you going a full deflection from 0 to 40. So to get it through that gate, all you have to do is drop into that setting and yeah. back out the other side. Now we'll use 5 degrees of flap for takeoff and I'll get you to set that for you just to get the lever. That's it, lift it up, drop it in, back in out to 5, which is over here. You can see the numbers there, that's it. A little bit tricky to see, but that's good, perfect. The flap indicator itself is up here, so that's what the flaps are actually doing. Yeah. And it, and that's it, slowly, slowly working its way up, that's it. Can you see that, Paul? Engine, that's it. Five engine thrust levers are here, so you get your left engine and your right engine. They do move independently. We're going to move them together for all stages of today's flight. When you're setting the thrust settings, we're going to watch the N1 circle at the top there. If you wanted 50% thrust, you simply advance the thrust levers to that little line on the outside of the circle there. Reaches the 5, the thrust vector. Once that thrust vector is set, you can let go of your hand, and the engine takes its own time to spool up to that yep. sort of speed. Same when you come back down. If you're on 20% thrust, you bring that little line down to the 2, and the engine's come back down to 2. Got the on. Still got the brakes on. Reverse thrust, so these guys here, they simply come up and all the way to the vertical position. You can hear them kicking yeah. in, you can see them kicking in there. Touch down to about 60 knots. That's correct. And that'll uh, bring us to a stop. Um, other than that, we've got our speed brake here, the spoilers there, the ones on top of the wing that fold up, so essentially destroy the airflow over the wing. That will slow down, I'll explain how we use that once we're flying along. The park brake's pretty straightforward, park brake off, park brake on. And then the fun stuff. Do you fly with a joystick at home normally, or joystick a joystick? So it's yeah. you should be pretty similar to the an Airbus type joystick. The Airbus type joystick. Yeah. So it's similar and but I'll different. Use the trim, wheel. trim wheels, like excellent. Yeah, 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 definitely. You, you'll you'll certainly be on in charge of those. So uh, uh, with the with uh, steering in the sky, left to go left, right to go right. Yep. Pull it towards you. The cars get smaller. Down. Push away from you. The cars get bigger. Yep. <laughs> Um, and then literally cows gets bigger. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, they're very true. And um, the uh, the rudder pedals there yes. not only control the rudder or the vertical tail of the aircraft, but also the nose wheel while we're on the ground. On the ground. So on the ground you're taxiing, you're gonna use your feet to steer left to go left, right to go right. Yep. Brilliant. Any questions with any of that? I think we're pretty happy. Right, so far. Excellent. So what we'll do in a second is I'll get a clearance to enter the runway. Okay. Once I get a clearance to enter to enter the runway, I'll get you to simply take the park brake off and add a little but a thirty percent of thrust, so a little line on the three. Do we have to stop at the stop line? Again? We don't we know we are at the stop line officially okay. now, so um, any closer we wouldn't be able to see it. So this is this is it. So we're, this is uh, us holding short. We'll taxi onto the runway and line ourselves up. We'll then get a clearance to take off. Mm -hmm. We'll take off and maintain runway heading and then we'll make a left hand turn a little bit as we climb out. We're gonna climb out to three thousand feet today.
and let's maintain 3000 and we'll then kick around to the left yep. now just to 27 is exactly so if you have a look at the map display yep. if you imagine uh, yeah, that's the angle degrees, roughly yeah. yeah that's it as you get closer you'll feel it a couple of things to note the engines are connected to the wheels so you could bring the thrust all the way off and we'll just keep rolling there are uh, tow brakes on your rudder pedal yep. so if you take your climb to the top and roll your the feet the that's it that's it yep. um, so if you feel like you're going a bit quick you can just bring the thrust off and just uh -huh. to keep yeah. the momentum going or you can check the steering with a bit of braking that's right yeah. um, the other thing to note is the front wheels behind you right so you kind of have to go past the turn a little bit yeah. to come around I, I, drive, I drive a bus so I'm used to being I was about to say just like a bus yeah. so that's a perfect that's exactly what that, right yeah. so we're pretty much ready to rock and roll the engine starters here need to go co to continuous which is one click to the right you can do that one if you like okay. That's it. The auto brake here goes to the RTO position, so one click to the right, rejected takeoff. So if we have an engine failure before we leave the runway, the brakes will kick in and help slow us down. The speed brakes are stowed, landing gears down, and the flaps are set at 5 degrees and checked. So that's our flight check. So we're pretty much ready to rock and roll. No smoking and fast seatbelt signs can go all the way forward. That tells everyone in the cheap seats we're ready to go. Sorry, Paul, no more smoking. Tau, 5 degrees, 5, 5, 6, so holding short runway 27, uh, ready. Flight experience uh, 556, five, line up. Lining up, flight experience 556. Five, so the park brake can go forward there. That's it. Just a little bit of thrust forward, about 30% on the, on, the, on the thrust levers. That's it. And watching the yellow line steering with your feet. That's it. Don't turn too early, that's it. And just find that center line again. Find it looking out the right to see if just to make sure nothing's coming. Yep, that's good. And just hold it there. Flight experience uh, 556 five, cleared for takeoff. Cleared for takeoff, five means 556. Five, so we have clearance to take off. So the thrust can go smoothly up to 100% now. Yep. Watch it in the right little line on the tens there. Perfect. Watch the far end of the runway and steering with your feet. Just making small adjustments. Magic feeling. Center. Doing pretty well there, that's it. 90 knots, 100 knots. What's V1? 110, V1 at 120, and rotate. Pulling smoothly back on the yoke. Keep pulling back, and we're going to get a 15 degree climb out as we, as we climb out here. That's it. Brilliant. Excellent. Positive rate of climb. Landing gear can go away. Out and down, all the way to the top, and let go. 15 degree climb out is the nose of the aircraft, just on that line that it's on now, so don't let it get too much higher than that. Keeping those wings nice and level. That's good. Flaps can go to one degree, and to one, plenty of time, no rush. And then flaps can go to zero as you lower the nose gently. Little tiny bit of left there, keeping those wings nice and level. There you go. And let's make a left hand turn now. Heading for Avalon. Avalon, that's right. You can bring the thrust smoothly back to 50%, which is roughly back here somewhere, but it's a little line on the fives. That's it, smoothly back. Remember, don't creep it back, just look at the thrust vector on the outside of the circle. That's 70, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, 60%, and that's 50%. You don't want to take too long looking in here, because then you're not looking outside, so you want to sort of get it, get it set, but that's all right, first time around. So, Brisbane Rangers, is it? Uh, um, so we've got that, that that'd be um, Mount Niki, and, and the Yu Yang's out in that direction there somewhere. Um, so we're sort of just over Melton, this would be over here somewhere. That's it. Now we're going to try and maintain 3,000, and we're up at 4,000 here, so we don't need to plummet towards the earth there. Keeping the nose just on the horizon, and we'll descend nice enough there. Keep the left hand turn going, a little bit more of a turn, but just raise that nose up a little bit, 
And as we get... Hold at what? 3,000. Okay. That's it. A bit more of a left-hand turn for me. And we want to try and... The heading bug here. Just on the, that triangle yep. there. Yep. That's it. On the bug. That's it. Fantastic. Still a bit high. All right, looking good. Hold that. N1 still stays at 50. Yep, that's fine. Level. That's looking good. We can bring the thrust back to to 40 percent, so another inch back to help us slow down, just a little bit. Very nice. So you can sort of see Port Phillip Bay out here, and um, yep. the airport Thank should you. be. See yep. That that's good. So you can see this white line here. Yep. That's we're the extended center line. Yes. So we're just going to essentially marry up with that and fly down the the center line okay. there. That's it. So we, do we want to? We're not going to swing out. No. No, okay. we're not. We don't need to hit the edge. Okay. We're just going to turn to the left. Right. But just maintain that heading for a minute. Yep. Uh, brilliant. A little bit high. Hold that nose up just a little bit. Just not too much there. Excellent. You can nudge the nose down a little bit. We're going to do a touch and go landing at Avalon. Auto brakes can go to the off position because we don't want the brakes to come on once we're on, on the. Yep, the just one, so this one here. Oh. One click to the right. Yep. That's it. We don't want the speed brakes, so they just tap those and make sure they're all the way forward there. That's it. Bring the thrust back to idle there. And we'll start slowing the aircraft down a bit more. The flaps can come out to one degree. I'm going to start a gentle descent. Just to one and let go. Perfect. And what? How many feet per minute? Um, we're going to look for about 600 feet per minute. So you can lower the nose gently. But remember, every time you bring the uh, the flap out, the nose is going to try and billow upwards. So be ready for that. You can hold that nose a little bit yeah. there. Yeah. That's it. As they come in. Okay, so Looking good. Just that gentle left-hand turn that you're making there is good. 176 is our runway heading. And Avalon, I'm can't quite make it is roughly here area. somewhere. I can kind of vaguely just see it there, yep. but it's a big I sort of patch of green. Yeah, yep, good. Yep, perfect. So we're still just just pull that nose up a little bit more for me. Bring these flaps out to five degrees. Whoop, in, back and out. Yep, and up to five. One more. Good. That's good. Just hold that nose there. That's Is it a marker or that, uh, that's an altitude reminder, that buzzer. Yep. Our assigned altitude is 3,000 feet, and every time we move away from that altitude by 300 feet, we get that noise. So if we climb through 3,300, yes. we'll get the noise, or if we descend through 2,700, we'll get that noise. Yep. Bit more of a left-hand turn for me, good solid turn, and let's find our, our heading of 176. So that's the heading we want. Let's uh, make that left-hand turn. Hold the nose up a little tiny bit. You're on ta track for our altitude now. Uh, we're on our glide slope. Keep the turn coming around to the left. More. More to the left. More of a solid turn for me. More of a solid turn. Hold it in. Hold it in. Hold it in. I'm That's it. At the wrong thing then, I think. Uh, There's the runway. Oh yeah, okay. so You're looking at the right thing, yeah. but it needs to be further to the right than okay. you expect it just, to be. Just haven't got the... the exactly. Yet. That's right. And it'll, it will get a, this one here. A bit further to the left for me. It'll and start to pick up the markers. Yeah, we've got the markers here. So right hand down now and level the wings out. And you're pretty much on glide slope. Hold the nose up a little bit for me. Just, oh, here's the glide slope. That's yep. it. Yep. Little tiny bit of left, and you're pretty much on the localizer as well. A little bit of left. Flaps. Uh, landing gear can come down when you're ready. Up and out, all the way to the bottom. What, so you see the little white dots there, white and red lights? Yep. That's the, the, essentially the pappy lights, and they're telling us if we're too high, too low. Three greens. Okay, hold, hold the nose up. Flaps to 15 degrees. Flaps to 15, maintaining the ILS, good. Hold the nose up a little bit, gently to the left for me. Hold the nose up a little bit more, we're descending a little bit quickly there, that's good. Remember to steer with your feet when we're on the ground. Gentle movements, little tiny bit of right. Hold the nose up a little bit more. We're using 30 degrees of flap and we're going to land at 140 knots. Hold the nose up a bit more. Thrust, 
three inches up. Don't look at the numbers, just three inches up for me. Just push it forward. Good. Flaps to 30 degrees. Just to 30. Watching the red lights. We're a little bit low there. Hold it there. Hold it there. Just keep that runway in the right spot. In the same spot there. Don't let it move. Bit more thrust forward. Fly the aircraft with your left hand and put your right, keep your right hand on the throttles. Nose up a little bit more. Essentially what you're doing is chasing the runway. So if the runway starts going up the windscreen, pull up. If it starts moving to the right, follow it to the right. Pull up a bit more. See if you can bring that red, red, those red lights just to touch the dashboard. Bit more thrust forward. Another inch of thrust forward. Good. Bit more thrust forward. I'm sort of right at a reference speed there. Hold it there. What was it? 140? Officially 140, reference is 138. Okay, yeah. Hold it there. Hold the nose up a little bit. That's good. You got the runway there? Yep. Brilliant. Hold the nose up a little bit. A little bit low here, but that's alright. Just maintain that. 500, 500 feet What's AGL. Height, 200? Um, I think from for Avalon it's 500. From memory, I can't remember though. That's alright. We've got the vi runway visual and I think we'll make it. A little bit to the left. A little bit of left there. That's good. Watching those lights the whole way down. We want to touch down essentially next to those lights. That's the touchdown zone. Bring the thrust back a little bit. Good. Going to slow the aircraft down a touch. That's it. Hold it there. Hold it there. Very good. Bleed the power off a little bit more. Bring the thrust back a little bit more. Flight experience, uh, five, five, six, raise the nose. Clear, touch and go. Raise the nose. Raise the nose. Flare. Pull up. Pull up. Pull up. Flare. Hold it there. Hold it there. Hold it there. Wait. Thrust all the way off. Oh. Clear. Touch and go. Flight experience. Five, five, six. Hold it there. Bit of float. Drop the nose on the ground. Steering with your feet. And, and thrust up to 100 percent. Come back a centimeter. Come, on back the, come back a centimeter on the thrust. You want to go to 11? That's it. Watch the runway. Doing very well here. This is good. 15, 120, and rotate. Pulling up on the nose. 15 degree climb out. Gear up. Positive rate, get gear up. Maintain runway heading. Flaps. That's it, maintain runway heading. Flaps to 5 degrees to begin with. In, into 5. Push the nose down a little bit for me there. Flaps can go to one degree now and lower the nose to ten degrees of nose up. That's good. And then flaps can go to zero. Mm, magic. Alright, we're gonna make a left hand turn now. To uh, cows. Uh, to cows which is essentially the green arrow, which is the VOR that I've dialed in for you. So turn to the left. Lower the nose, thrust back to 50%. Smooth movement right back to here somewhere, don't want to take too long. And just lower the nose a little bit, we're going to maintain 3,000 feet. That's 60% there, a bit further back, another centimeter or so back. Good. So this is, whoop, that's it, hold it there. So this is pretty good for the nose position, but keep the turn going. We want to try and maintain a 25 degree angle bank turn. The angle bank are the lines around the top here. Mm -hmm. So this, tri this triangle is 10 degrees, 20 degrees, yeah. and 30 degrees. So yeah. currently you're doing 15 degree angle bank. Turn more to the left, but keep the nose in between the two and a half and the five. The first little line and the second little line above the horizon. A little bit of right hand down there to level the wings out as we approach our heading. Hold the nose up a little bit more. Bit more right hand down there to level the wings out. See Phillip Island, Paul. Alrighty, pull that nose up a little bit more. So this is um, Queenscliff over here, yep. Sorrento here. So Phillip Island will be out that way roughly. Yep. That's it. Which makes sense because that's yeah. where our VOR okay. is pointing. Yeah, so that's the. The that's the. the rip there. Yeah, that's it. Now you'll notice with the artificial horizon, when the nose of the aircraft is just touching that two and a half degree mark or just above it, we actually maintain altitude. Okay. If the nose is just below that two and a half point, start we start descending yep. and we start just with above that with this thrust setting, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So let's keep those wings nice and level for me. 
Do a bit of trim. To trim. Now we have an electric trim. Your left hand thumb. Yep. Two switches. If you want to trim, trim up, you pull the switches down. Yep. So you essentially. Oh, yeah, yep. The opposite. Exactly. Yep. Level those wings out for me. Stop the turn. Now you can see how the arrow is point. Aileron trim as well. Uh, there isn't aileron trim. Yeah. So let's get those that right hand down a bit more. So you see how you're sort of kicking it to the right there. Just relax your hands to neutral. Oh, yeah, we've lost That's better. Yeah. We've lost that VOR there. So just a gentle turn to the right. That's good. Just about on it now. So just level the wings up there. A bit more left hand down. And bring your hands to neutral now. That's it, a bit more to neutral. Relax your hands. Stop the turn. That's it. There you go. So hold that nose up a little bit. Relax your feet there for a second. So we shouldn't need to use the riders while we're in the sky because we have a yaw damper on the aircraft. And that should settle itself Just up nicely. That's it. Brilliant. That's no hands, Paul. <laughs> That's it. No hands, but no autopilot. That's yeah, the thing yeah, to keep yeah. in mind. Yes. That's it. Doing nicely. We sort of so creep. Cloud base is about five thousand. Uh, no, cloud, I think cloud base is uh, about three and a half. So we're sort of pretty close to it. Um, got some. Slightly. Yeah. That's it. And I think from memory. We're going to overfly Phillip Island and then head back towards uh, Melbourne Airport. There's an intersection at Phillip Island. Uh, that's an air intersection. So we're using that as a turning point to turn back towards to Melbourne Airport. And there's that green arrow there is, is where the VOR, where the intersection is. So it's an imaginary spot in, in, in a vertical line up from... That's it. So what you'll see uh, is this this guy here is always pointing, the arrow is pointing towards the, the, the beacon. And the beacon's a point source. So what we're going to do is actually as we fly towards it, as we fly over the top of it, you'll see this arrow flip around to the opposite direction. And point the other way. If we that's it. it. And that's when we, ha we know we have what we call station passage, which is overflying the, the so aid. With, with, a, um, with an intersection like that, do you always overfly and then turn or do you turn? Usually you overfly like and then turn because that gives you the most accurate position yeah. fix. Um, but not always. Yeah. You might do an outbound to outbound or yeah. an inbound to inbound. But Especially if it's more than 90 degrees because you overfly quite a way to come back to Exactly. Yeah. So it depends. So okay. what you might do from this point here, if we wanted to head towards somewhere else, what we do is we, is we know from via the cow's VOR we want to have, we want to hit the the zero, uh, you know, zero three zero radial, for example. So we could turn from here and marry up with the zero three zero radial on a particular heading, and that would sort of make us a turn. We'd skip the VOR, but yes, yep. but um, you know, get us sort of predicting predicting where we're going to need to be. Yep. And as we line up, it obviously it'll. The antennas down there. Is that? Um, um, this is Arthur C. Yeah, Arthur C. Exactly Arthur right. C. I was going to say Rye and sort of Sorrento Sand. just out here to our left here. Um, Flinders and, th and things like that just out yep. here. Yep. Um, so that's the tip of Phillip Island over there on the that's right. That's the, uh, the the nobbies there. Western Port Bay. Nice scenic day, isn't it? That's it. Do you tune into real weather? Or uh, no, we don't tune into real weather, but we can plug in real weather. Yeah. Um, so we could we can change the weather however we want. Mm -hmm. 3,400 3, feet. So this is this is uh, this is our reminder. This is what we what we want to be doing, and this is what we're actually doing. And if we locked in the autopilot, it would it would do that for it us. Would hold That's it. At it. 3, so if air traffic control came on the radio, they'd say wh whatever the number they say, we'd put in here. But we're we're flying it like a Cessna 172. I'm going. I'm uh, reading it the wrong way. That's it. Just fly towards the arrows. Makes life yeah. pretty easy. So this is VFR visual flight rules. That's it. Now what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll overfly the field, and then make a right hand turn and head towards. So it's directly above the strip, is it? The v uh, it's VOR not above the strip. No. The, the VOR is its own location. So, Phillip Island Airport is a different spot to yep. the, the yep. cow's VOR. Yeah. So it's 
really is in cows then. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. Um, actually, I don't think it is. Because <laughs> cows are at the north of the island. It is, yeah. And I'm pretty sure uh, the VOR is at yeah, the south of the island. Over near the race That's track it, somewhere. exactly. Yeah. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to overfly, yeah. make a, a right-hand turn. Okay, so circle back. A circle right back right. this way. Yes. We'll overfly uh, Moorabbin Airport. Yep. And, and intersect. YMMB. That's it. So I've also tuned in the... Uh, so if I pl put... Uh, yeah, actually, what I'll do... Uh, 1176, which is the VOR for cows. Okay. And that way, if I flick this over, I'm just going to switch your VOR to the first VOR. So that's still the same green arrow. Yep. Flick over to your NDB2. The yes. blue arrow is now Moorabbin. Yep. So there's always two audio and two... Uh, navigation so these are your radio. communications and navigations which are independent and then we've got these secondary navigations as well which is VORs and NDBs they call them but uh, there's different ways of, me of, uh, of flying along that's it so these here are, are your trim wheels so essentially if you um, if you were flying along, if ma imagine you were doing a, a long climb, for example, a 10-15 minute climb, you wouldn't want to sit here and have your hands back for, for, for 10 minutes, you, you wear your muscles out. So what the trim wheels do is allow the, you to s change the center point into the climb. So as you pull back, you trim the aircraft so, so that you can relax your hands and then it fl maintains that climb or maintains level or maintains a descent or whatever like that. Um, it's similar to a boat when you're flying, uh, when you're f sailing along on the on the plane, they call it. And the upboard has a little trim exactly. on it too. There's like a small, uh, small elevator on the elevators. Like, yeah, and that's and right. So, yeah. I, I'll explain it to you on, on a little model, but essentially it holds the, 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 the horizontal tailplane in a particular spot. S the, the thing to, to remember though, I think the note is that with a, a big aircraft, like something like the 737, the elevator, or the, what they call the stabilizer trim, yep. is the whole wing uh, that moves. Yeah, yeah. And okay. the, it's and, and the That's right. And the, el the yoke only controls a small tab. Uh, okay. That's the is difference. That right? That's right. Hold that yeah. nose up a little bit. Yeah. We're uh, should be pretty much on top of the uh, on top of cows here right. somewhere. Yeah. Um, that's it. So we'll see that when. Yeah, uh, we should uh, we should see, we should see uh, we should enter a, what we call the cone of confusion, where it sort of starts wobbling a little bit. Okay. So we're just going to maintain yeah, this yeah. heading, the pink yeah. bug, yeah. and then all of a sudden it'll flick, and then we will have confirmed station passage. And what are we measuring? What distance is that? that? Actually, the distance is to the uh, to Melbourne Airport. Okay. So the DME it's here is so VOR the cows DME yeah, would be yeah. down here, but yeah. it's not reading, so yeah. that's fine. So here it goes there you go, and you can see that green green arrow has disappeared, so and it swings around. back around. That's right. So we can start a turn around to the right. Still maintaining three thousand. Maintaining three thousand. So a right hand turn. Degree. Look, a 25 degree angle bank turn is a good turn, but we want to keep that nose up in the sky. So pull that nose up, keep it in between the two and a half and the five. Keep pulling back. See how we're in the dirt there and we're descending? We're currently descending at two and a half thousand feet a minute. That's better. That's a fair rate. <laughs> it is a fair rate, especially when you're at only at three thousand feet. Yes. Bit more of a turn. So there's ten degrees you're turning now. Fifteen. Twenty. See if you can get twenty-five. Just in between the two. That's perfect. Yep keeping the nose in the right spot. So essentially, okay. Paul, we were just looking here for the, the angle of bank indicator. That's it. Um, Watch the horizon. That's it. Holding it there. Very good. This is fun. I don't usually get to sit back and, uh, and not fly the aircraft. Like, so not, not have to touch right. anything. Thank, thank you for the uh, voter confidence. No, no that's right. Mm -hmm. Normally, I'm, like, I'm sort of monitoring everything, but you're doing quite yeah. well here. Yeah. That's good. Always fun to someone, fly with someone who, uh, who has a bit of flying experience. Now remember, we can disregard the uh, the green arrow. We're going to fly the blue arrow, which is the yes. ADF yeah, to Moorabbin. That's yeah. right. So uh, you can actually flick this switch here to the central position down to the central position, and that just turns. That's it. Yeah. Just turns the other one off there. That's it. Okay. Hold that nose up. We're descending, and you're getting a bit steep on the turn. You're starting to spill everyone's coffee there. So let's bring your left hand down, and just pull that nose back up into the sky. 
So to beyond 30 degrees, the aircraft keeps flying, the angle bank, beyond 30. Um, the aircraft keeps flying, but it's not very comfortable for the guys in the back, and that's the, the main reason we have that bank angle. That's it. Hold it there. A little bit of back pressure just to keep that nose up a touch. That's it. Just trying to regain the altitude. Yeah, yeah, just creeping up slowly is the way to go, otherwise you sort of seesaw down the, uh, the flight path. As you're approaching that uh, that blue heading bug there, or the blue bug, let's start leveling the wings out. That's it. And you'll probably find... Yeah, so you'll see the green arrow here of cows. Well, is sort of the, the actual, in, the, the marker is actually just here somewhere, so you'll, you'll see it'll swing past as we go. Good positive left hand down to level the wings out. Relaxing your hands forward to keep the, the maintain altitude. That's good. Now, normally, things that we haven't done... We this is Western Fort Bay. This, that's it. Things that we haven't done, we have this after takeoff checklist here. Okay. Engine bleeds are on, which are these two switches here. Make sure we're using the right thing. Just keep that left hand down for me. The air conditioning packs are on. Landing gear is up, and it goes to the off position. So it actually goes into the middle that's position. Here. Perfect. And no lights, which is good. Flaps up and no lights. So the flaps are up, and we confirm no lights there as well. That's our landing landing checklist complete. That's it. Hold it there. That's your after takeoff checklist complete, I should say. Looking good. Now we can actually use the uh, the auto throttles. I don't know if you play with auto throttles uh, on, at flight sim at home or anything yes, like that. I have not so, much, but so we'll we'll, 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 we'll do this list list. We'll sort of do this little little leg with the auto throttles on. This switch here, if you flick that up, it'll come back to the center. But just flick it up once. That's it. Green light comes on. That's yep. this auto throttles are now armed. So maybe bring that spring that down to 250, 250. Nice even number. Now the the engines are going to control themselves. Yep. So we've still got directional control, but it's going to do whatever it needs to do yeah, to maintain so a speed. So it's not fully automatic flight. It's That's right. It's just now doing the auto throttle. Exactly. You have to be very aware, though, that because we're doing the auto throttles here, we have to be very picky about our nose position. Because if we have our nose too high, what happens is the aircraft slows down, and then all of a sudden it goes, hang on, I'm too slow, so it tries to put more uh -huh. throttles yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, so you'll be all over the place. The problem with lots of throttles and a nose high attitude is yes. we never gain speed, we just gain altitude. Uh, okay. yeah. in, the, in the in reverse, yeah. if the nose is too low, we can pick up speed, yes. so the aircraft throttles back to idle, and we just uh, yeah. sink into the yeah. ground. And keep you going. Exactly. Yeah. So and what you want to do, that's it. Uh, so this is an NDB, it's not what they call a non-directional beacon. It works si si same, same, but different, really, to a VOR. Yeah. A little bit further to the right. Yeah. Because visually I know where it is. Yep. That's where I did my uh, general aviation training. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's it. A little bit of left hand down just to level those wings out, because it takes time to level. So remember, there's a bit of a delay there as well. Keeping that nose up a little bit. There we go. Sort of out over Tyab, I'd say, probably about now, roughly. Uh, airports, uh, Cerberus is down here. Yep. YMMB on the nose, that's good. Just gentle movements. Trying to keep that nose in roughly the same spot there. Alright. So we're getting more thrust now. Yeah, because it. And you can, and that, like, like I was saying, you can kind of monitor that. You keep, if you keep the nails in the right spot, yeah. the thrust shouldn't change. Yes. So if it, all of a sudden it starts putting on a lot of thrust, you know, you know that your nose is a little bit high. Not right exactly. Yet. Okay. I'm just going to slide okay. myself back in here. Alrighty. Little tiny bit of, that's it, a little bit of right. Just a tiny little bit of right there. About 20 nautical miles away from Moravian at the moment. Yep. Basically, we're about Mount Eliza now. Frankston ahead. That's it. Or just to the right. Yep. Carum should be about here somewhere. Yep. Mount Dandenong over there. Yeah, yeah, it, it 
it's too short to even touch and go wherever. <laughs> You'd have Casa jumping up and down. Yeah. Yeah, 3,000 feet. Yeah. Trying for 3,000 anyway. We're a bit to the right and left. That's good. We'll just cut cut the bay off here. Eeld and Weir up here somewhere. I'm sort of out that way, a fair way. Sugarloaf Reservoir and so on. Cardinia Reservoir. The point is a good idea, isn't it? Yeah. How long did it take to think of that? Uh, to be honest, I don't know. It's been it's been here since I've been here, which is yeah, good. Right. And that's and how long is that? Uh, I've been here for two years. Um, the the simulator has been here for four, but I dare say it, it would have got here pretty quickly after that, yeah, yeah. because it really does make make life easy. Where you just go, look, that's where that is. That's yeah. where that is. Yeah. Um, what we'll do is we'll, as soon as we get a station passage at um, Moorabbin, we we'll, go, we'll, go, we'll go to Epping, Epping yeah. and at Epping we'll, we'll, uh, we'll intersect, uh, intercept yeah. Epping and then... Uh, I've been flying a bit further out to... Uh, Plenty. Hill, hills. Oh yeah. Uh, is it? Oh, wait a minute, we're going... Oh, whoop, whoop. What's that nails? Actually... Slow down. And the building, is that Monash University you can see? Um, straight ahead? White building inland a bit. It could be. I can't tell you. I, can't, I've, I, I don't have it. Moorabbin Airport's roughly here somewhere. Yep. So we, let's let's make that right hand, gentle right hand turn there. That's it. It's just like driving any vehicle. You get distracted with something. That's exactly it. You're drifting away. And people kind of think for so they they get a bit confused with uh, with aircraft in the sense that um, they think that it's si different to a car, but very similar to a car. When you, when you're on a freeway, just because you're going at 100 doesn't mean you're not still steering. You got to make little adjustments as you as you go. The reason you have all these hand this hand in is your feet are sort of off. Uh, not oh, yeah, okay. That's I'm it. Relax your feet. I'm offsetting it. That's with the it. Ladder. Yeah. <laughs> It, that's the brain taking over, isn't it? Yeah. It's sort of like uh, <laughs> subconsciously. <laughs> All right. I, I thought we must be into a crosswind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's head for pool. So we'll actually we're, we're not going to head for Epping. We'll head for Plenty, just a little bit further out, yeah, and then we'll we'll come in. That's it. Uh, now the, you can just make up Morabin Airport just down here. Yep. See that the, the little cross. If you stand up, you might be able to see that little the patchwork the pattern there. That's three, it. Five, left and right. Alright, let's make a little bit of a right hand turn. Just a little bit. There you go, that nose climb as we climb in there again. Yeah, we're coming back down. A little bit of left hand down, just to level those wings out. Uh, stations. So, if I zoom you out here a little bit, I've just turned what we call stations on. Um, so, PLE is plenty. Epping's there. Okay. So we're going to go to plenty and then yes. make a left hand turn towards okay. Epping. It's a little bit confusing. I want to zoom you back in, just so you don't have to worry about too much about it. And again, you should see the NDB for. Uh, There's the city there, Paul, Melbourne. Yep. The skyscrapers. A little bit of left hand down, just keep those wings level. That's it. You can just make out Albert Park there and Albert Park Lake. The golf course. Yeah. Uh, you can just make out the Yarra River cutting yeah. through there as well. So what's the, oh, the ADF still on Moorabbin, is it? Still on Moorabbin, yes. So we actually haven't overflown it. Haven't overflown it. What yeah. I can do here, yep. that's the ADF for plenty. So we've just, we just saw the arrow click around. Yes. The, the, the thick arrow yep. is Moorabbin. The thin arrow is plenty. So you can see there's actually two arrows there. Yep, yep. So the thin arrow is plenty. Yes. The thick arrow is Moorabbin. Okay, so they're almost... Uh, they're pretty close. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. So li just a little bit to the left. To the left. Oh, sorry, to the right. I'm right. Do, do as I do, not as I say. That's right. I saw the That's it. direction, but it didn't gel with... Now, what? Uh, little bit, hold that in and hold that nose up a touch. So follow that uh, that NDB. And what we're going to do is, if you have a look on my map here, I'm just going to zoom it in a little bit. Epping, sorry, plenty in Epping. And Epping's on the flight path for 2-7. Okay, yep. So, so we're turning so around So this, that's right, Epping. so the... Uh, if I do, sorry, that one... 
the thick arrow there is pointing towards Epic. Epic. Yep. So that's what we want after we turn. It yeah. So we're going to essentially turn around to there. Again, you can just sort of make out uh, the city, just a few of the buildings there. You might be able to see. Uh, that's it. Rudder. That's it. The rudder pedal helps you out there. So when you're flying along here, it's not too much of an issue. It's only when we're trying to put the aircraft on the ground that crosswind becomes an issue. Um, and that's when you essentially, if the runway was in front of us, we'd actually be flying the aircraft sideways into the wind, because aircraft fly into wind, and you'd be flying that way. And as you get close, you'd use the rudder to swing your nose around and put the aircraft on the ground. Sure, those antenna, they're not, uh, are they they're not our antenna, oh, but the, 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 the TV, yeah, the, the, that's it, the, the, the TV's on, that's it. Bring that nose up a little bit, start slowing ourselves down. Come down to 180 here, 180. Let's bring out one degree of flap. Ah, oh, that's pretty close, that's fine. yeah, that's it. Down. Just one degree of flap up and let it go. Perfect. Holding it up there just a touch. You can see the white dotted line going that way is the runway center line. Okay. And, uh, that's our actual position, and there's plenty that we're aiming for. And then we're going to this one. All right. Looking good. So I've got uh, Melbourne, uh, the runway 27 ILS tuned up as well. Which is 109.3. Oh, three. For 27. Hold the nose up a little bit more, just maintaining that altitude. So you can see on the approach page, 109.3. Mm -hmm. The course is 263, so that would go into this guy here. So if you want to dial that around to 263, you can. Around. That's it. And we're going to use 140 again for our landing speed. Actually, we'll go 145 for our landing speed. Bring your flaps out to 5 degrees when you're ready. That's it. Back and out. One more. That's it. Perfect. Now, 263 is the actual heading, magnetic heading of our runway, even though we call it 27. Yeah. Yep. Maintaining altitude. You can see the two going winky wonky from each other. Yeah, so we Let's start a left hand turn towards Epping. Just a gentle turn, that's it. Maintaining altitude. A little bit tiny bit of right hand down. We can put a flight director on. And that's that pink crosshair there. Mm -hmm. So you want to keep the nose on the pink crosshair? Hold the nose up a little bit more, a little bit more of a turn to the left, a bit more of a turn to the left, that's it. That's looking good. Now we've got it. That's it. Really? So that's actually directing the position we're at, regardless of exactly. we've still got to maintain. Exactly. It's not like the VOR needle that we're bringing. That's across. right. So keep that turn going to the left for me. And two six three. So put the nose of the aircraft on that crosshair if you can. The glide slope's coming alive okay. here, and the localizer's coming alive as well. The speed for us, that's right, so you just put the nose in the right spot. Keep the turn going, hold the nose up a little bit. Runway is out in front of us. Yep. Raise the nose for me, I'm just going to get rid of these arrows so they're not confusing us. Hold the nose up a little bit more. And we're getting station passage here at Epping. Speed to 160. This one, whoop, whoop, whoop. Flaps to, oh sorry, landing gear down first. Up and out, all the way to the bottom. 
little movements. You can see the red lights there. Yep. Good. Maintain. Hold the nose up. We're going to try and maintain altitude. We're a bit low. Flaps to 15 degrees. That's it. Don't take too long inside the aircraft. There you go. Hold it there. So we're a little bit to the left, are we? That's right. Pilot. That is correct. So we need to fly to the right. You're chasing those dots. That's it. A little bit left. Speed to 145. You know what? Hold the nose higher for me. We're a little bit low here and I want to... That's it. Flaps to 30 degrees. Good. A little bit of left. Gears down. Landing gears down. Hold the nose up a little bit. To cancel the auto throttles. Keep, don't lose sight of the runway. Small movements. A little bit of left. Fight against those auto throttles. That's what. That's just the fight against yeah, the flap. To that's it. Hold the nose up a little bit. We need to fly to the left. To cancel the auto throttles, when we're on top of the runway, a button here. Uh -huh. So you, you keep your fingers on the throttles. Yep. Let but the aircraft add and remove power as it wants to. Right. And only cancel when we touch down. When we're, uh, when we're about 100 feet above the ground. You'll hear 100. Hold the nose up a little bit more. And then speed brakes on touchdown, or we've armed the speed brake. I'll arm the speed brake in a second. Hold the nose up a little bit more. All brakes are going to two. Speed brakes are now armed. A little bit of left and reverse thrust once we're on the ground and heading straight. No rush. Yep. Remember to stay with your feet. Hold they the, hold, back, hold hold the nose up a little bit. There's a notch. You'll feel yeah. it nice and smoothly. It's not a rip up. Just yeah. nice and smoothly up. Hold the nose up a little bit. Maintaining center line there. That's good. Good. Small movements. And hit the button at 100. That's right. You should be on top of the runway at that point and essentially on top of those lights really. Hold the nose down a little bit, a little bit left. You can gently use your feet here. Uh -huh. Gently, gently. Hold the nose up a little bit. That's good. Hold it there. Lower the nose a touch. Still watching the lights. On glide slope. On localizer. Hold the nose there. Hold it there. Hold it there. Hold it there. Wait for it. Hold the nose there. Hold the nose there. Cancel the auto throttle. We should hear that 100 pretty soon. Cancel the auto throttle. Raise the nose. Flare. Thrust smoothly off. All the way back. All the way back. Hold the nose there. A little bit of float because we're a bit quick. Wait. And flare again. Rotate. That's it. Nose on the ground. Steering with your feet. Now, and the reverse thrust all the way to the top. And off at 60. That's it. So 100 knots. No hands. Steering with your feet. Relax your hands. No hands, no hands, no hands. 60 knots. Fit, off. Yep, reverse thrust off. A little bit of right foot there. Just a little bit. Good. You can bring us to a stop using the toe brakes. Pretty good. And we're down. And we're down. That was good. We were, we got, we, as, as, we came, <laughs> as we came in, we were a little bit quick. Yeah. So what happened was we yeah, floated a little bit yeah. and then then landed, but that was not, not too bad. Stopped on the runway, that's fine. Only thing I'd probably mention with that one was um, steering with your hands. Years of driving yeah. practice say you're on the road, yeah. so you want to do this. Yeah. The problem is you've got enough airflow over the wings for the wings to be active. So if you touch down and you do this with your hands, what you're essentially doing is rolling the, the, the wings. Yeah. And you've got enough airflow over the wings, so if you do this with your hands... Yeah. Get a nice wing, you get the yeah. nice fireworks display as the wing hits the ground. So you want to avoid using your hands as much yep. as you can. So that's the quickest trip we've had to Kong, Hong Kong. Hong Kong. Kong. It's teleportation to Hong Kong. Yeah. <laughs> now, we'll just do the one landing here, for, just for time. We'll get bring your flaps up to five degrees. That's it. We're going to fly. This is Cheplakok. This is the new airport. We're going to take off from here and fly directly over to the old airport, which is just out there. Yeah. Which I've flown into. Haven't flown, but I've yep, been there you've been there. Yeah. Excellent. So you yeah, have a good idea of the lay of the land. Let's go. Thrust up to 100%. And we'll get underway. Smoothly up to 100%. Good. Just 
small it's movements on your feet. Is this, the Dusk. Light. It's gonna it's gonna get uh, darker as oh, we so fly. It's right at sunset, is it? Yep. Airspeed alive of sixty knots. Slow speed. That's it. If you watch the far end of the runway, that's the easiest thing to do. Uh -huh. And make small adjustments occurring yeah. to that. 120, yep. so that's V1, and rotate. Pulling the nose up into the sky. Rotate. Yep. Yes, this still had water over it when I was last there. Mm, I can imagine. That's it. So we've got a positive rate of climb. Up. Landing gear up. Flap to one degree. Maintain heading. There's a big mountain range here on the right, so we don't want to turn to the right. Flaps to zero. I want to distract you very quickly. Keep the keep your wings there. Two little white knobs on your left knee, just out, out on this side, outside of your knee. Turn the little one all the way to the left, and the big one three quarters of the way. And the big one. Three quarters. That's good. Just makes it a little bit easier to see out the front. Just dims the cabin lights. Yep. That's it. Now I want you to bring the smooth, guess where the power goes back to 50% and lower the nose and find the horizon. Guess the power, watch the nose. And just hold it there. You can come back a little bit further even if we're coming back to 40%. Looking good. Holding the nose up just a touch. So that's the Hong Kong there you can see Paul if you look. So we've got the, old Hong, uh, the new Hong Kong airport behind us here. Hong Kong City is all through here. The airport itself is out here somewhere, so there's a big building, uh, sorry, big mountain range there, we're not gonna, we not, can't fly straight the in. Here, is the it? checkerboard is here, so we're going to fly out this way, over the left-hand edge of the city, around to the right, and land. That's it, so we're following the left-hand edge of the city there. Uh, da, 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 da. Are we heading for the checkerboard? Uh, yeah, the, now turn to the left gently, can you see this little expanse of nothing here? Yes, the black? that's the hill, is it? That's where the hill is, that's yeah. where the checkerboard is. So that's what you're flying towards. You can bring the thrust all the way to off, to yeah. idle. We have plenty of speed. We need to slow and the just aircraft down. down. That's it. So we're basically aiming for the hill. Yeah, so we need to go to the left a little bit. That's it. You see it, Paul, the dark patch in, in, the, in the buildings? Well, I can see the hill. Not the big one. Just here, this little dark patch yeah. here. Flaps to one degree. Middle. Flaps to one. A little bit of a left. We're currently heading this way. That's it. Yeah, the airport's down to the right of that checkerboard. This was, uh, you had to have a special endorsement to land here, didn't Correct. you? Correct. Flaps to five degrees. A little bit more to the left. The runway starts here somewhere and goes in that direction. Landing gear can come down when you're ready. Good. Auto brakes to two. Auto brakes. To two. Three clicks to the right. Good. Hold it there. See the green lights there? Yep, that's the, start the, of the uh, threshold. That's exactly right. The checkerboard is here. Yep. I'm going to bring your flaps out to five degrees, uh, 15 degrees, sorry. Yep. You just maintain that nose there. Don't let it move. Hold it down, hold it down, hold it down. Good. Plenty of speed. See the strobe lights here? That's essentially the flight path you want to follow. Don't turn too early. Pull the nose up a little bit. Yep. Bringing your flaps to 30 degrees. Maintain this picture. Don't let the nose drop. Don't no, fall, I should say. There's the checkerboard. Yep. If you back in the day, if you couldn't see the checkerboard, you weren't allowed to land. Okay. Don't yeah. uh, oversteer with your feet there. Hold the nose up a little bit more, and three inches of thrust forward. Lower the nose. That's it. Hold it there. Good. Pretty much spot on for altitude here. You can see the mountain up on our left. The buildings out on the right. Have a look. What, see what everyone's doing for dinner. See what's on TV. Bit of a right hand turn for me. There's your runway. More to the right. There's the checkerboard. Bit of back pressure as you turn. Nice turn there. Perfect. Spot on on altitude. Hold it there. Hold it there. Hold it there. Raise the nose up gently. Hold the turn in. Hold the turn in. Very nice. And wait for it. Level the wings out. Bleed the power off slowly. Use your feet to steer. Left foot down. Hold the nose up a little bit. Thrust all the way off. Right hand down. 
This is a bit of crosswind technique, bit of right hand. Keep your foot there, keep your foot there, that's it. On the ground. Nose on the ground, steering with your feet. And reverse thrust all the way to the top when you're ready. No hands. No hands. 80 knots. 70 knots. 60 knots. <laughs> reverse thrust away. Let's plant your left foot all the way to the ground and taxi off the runway here. Left foot all the way down. That's it, we'll come off the runway a little bit further, you can add a little bit of thrust there just to get you off the runway. Not too much, we don't take off again, come back a little bit. And there's water just here. Welcome to Hong Kong, we should say. Water breaks off. Around to the left. Hold the left in, hold the left in. You can use your toe brakes to bring us to a stop. You can pop the park brake on, and you can let them bring the stairs out to us. Fasten seatbelt sign can go off. That's it. Congratulations, Anton. Okay. Very well done. That was a fantastic flight. Pleasure flying with you. Very good. That was and good. You. <laughs> that was I hope you enjoyed.